As the courts take up this issue, so are the campaigns. Republican candidate for governor, Greg Abbott, tries to compare his opponent, State Senator Wendy Davis, to the president. Wendy Davis's book, Forgetting to Be Afraid, came out today. Also today, her opponent, Greg Abbott, releasing a web ad called Forgetting to be ethical. Political ads are rolling out and we are trying to help you separate fact from fiction. Leading up to election day, we are making a commitment to investigate the claims made in these ads. Tonight, Democratic candidate for Governor Wendy Davis is attacking her Republican opponent, Greg Abbott, in a new television ad. KXAN's Kevin Schwaller takes an in-depth look at the claims the campaign is making. When you're battling cancer, you pray for a cure. The ad focuses on grant money awarded through the Cancer Prevention Research Institute of Texas, or CPRIT. Originally, the attorney general, in this case, gubernatorial candidate Greg Abbott, was reserved a spot on the oversight committee for CPRIT. But Greg Abbott did his best to keep my prayers from being answered. That claim is not true. We found no proof that Abbott intentionally blocked funding. The awards questioned by the state auditor are to groups that work in cancer fields. Still, critics continue to question how the organizations use the money. Greg Abbott was charged with overseeing the state cancer research fund. That's mostly true. Abbott's office contends he appointed someone to serve for him to avoid any conflicts of interest, and his spot was one of several on the oversight committee. But he let his wealthiest donors take tens of millions in taxpayer dollars with without proper oversight. That's misleading. The Davis campaign was not able to show us that the donors themselves received millions of dollars directly. Though we found some Abbott donors have connections to groups that landed secret funding. The Public Integrity Unit also finished a criminal investigation into secret grants that ended with an indictment, but not for Abbott. They showered Abbott with gifts and free vacations. That's mostly true. KXAN News can confirm one secret grant award connection. Davis's campaign also points to another possible connection. Still years of personal disclosure documents do detail gifts to Abbott, including a pair of boots, travel, and tickets to a Cowboys game. The ad ends echoing the theme of the video. And they made off with money that was meant to find a cure. Kevin Schwaller, KXAN News. We dig even deeper to give context to these claims online. You can see that now at KXAN.com. My name is Wendy Davis. The new ad from Greg Abbott's campaign focuses on ethics. The first claim that as a state senator, Davis voted on bills that aided clients is misleading. In one instance, Senator Davis voted in 2011 for a bill related to the collection of unpaid tolls. Documents from the North Texas Tollway Authority, or NTTA, show the senator's law firm, Newby Davis, was selected as a law firm dealing with collections for the authority in 2012. Still, this article used to back up the claim focused on one client, not multiple. How and why I fight for the people and the issues that I fight for today. The next claim is a headline, public privateering. Wendy Davis said she wouldn't, but did it anyway. That's mostly true. This headline comes from an editorial in the Dallas Morning News. The quotes from Senator Davis in the article are vague in regards to promises about not voting on bills that aid clients, but it would be someone's opinion to say she actually broke these promises. Still, the editorial relies mostly on the article supporting the claim before it, and Senator Davis's firm was granted that business. My work for Texas or the many ways that I've been blessed. Finally, the claim that Senator Davis's legal work is the subject of an open investigation by the FBI. That's mostly untrue. The evidence just isn't there for the specific claim. The FBI won't confirm or deny an investigation. A complaint focused on Senator Davis, the director of the Public Integrity Unit, says information from its investigation was shared with the FBI. Still, even the article this is based on does not say specifically that Senator Davis's work or the senator herself is the subject of the investigation. My name is Wendy Davis. Kevin Schwaller, KXAN News. Republican candidate for Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick goes after Democrat Leticia Vandepute in his new ad. KXAN investigator Kevin Schwaller takes an in-depth look at the claims his campaign is making. Leticia Vandepute is out of touch with Texas parents and wants Washington bureaucrats to run our schools. Liberal Leticia voted to keep Common Core in Texas. In this ad, Republican Dan Patrick makes the case that his opponent misses the mark on education. Liberal Leticia voted to keep Common Core in Texas. That's misleading. Leticia Vandepute did vote against a bill aimed to block the Common Core school standards in Texas, but it was not specifically a vote for the Common Core standards in the state. 
Also, saying that Vanapute voted to keep the standards in Texas could insinuate Texas was following the Common Core standards, which it's never adopted. Opposed school choice. That's misleading as well. Vanapute authored a bill in 2004 that would not allow tax money to be used for private school expenses. She also voted against a bill related to charter schools, and both of those fit under what Patrick commonly refers to as school choice. But the ad leaves out the fact that Vanapute voted for a bill Patrick authored, increasing the charter school cap, among other changes. And actually voted to stop schools from removing teachers convicted of a felony. That's mostly untrue. Vanderpute voted against a bill that makes it easier for teachers to be fired for certain felonies. The vote did not stop schools from firing teachers for felonies altogether, as the ad claims. Hi, I'm Dan Patrick, as Senate Education Chair. I passed some of the biggest reforms in decades to improve Texas schools. My education plan will empower parents, teachers, and school districts, not government. Real reform, better schools. Dan Patrick for Lieutenant Governor. Kevin Schwaller, KXAN Investigates. And to take a look at our other ad fact checks, including one from Vandepute's campaign, you can visit our website at KXAN.com. If it seems like you've seen more negative ads in recent years, you're right. This chart from the Westland Media Project compiled all political advertising over the last few election cycles. You can see it's increased by more than 30 percent. And in 2012, less than 15 percent of political ads were positive. Now, I understand there's some people have a difference of opinion on rape or incest. No, rape is always rape. But Dan Patrick would deny victims of rape any options at all. At issue, Dan Patrick's stance on women's health issues. Now, I understand there's some people have a difference of opinion on rape or incest. No, rape is always rape. The way Leticia Vandepute's campaign presents this clip is misleading. A campaign spokesperson contends the video shows her Republican opponent, Dan Patrick, seems to belittle the issue of rape and incest. Still, it leaves out the context that Senator Patrick was actually talking about abortion in this comment. Here's more of that clip from a recent debate. I understand there's some people have a difference of opinion on rape or incest, but that child is still born in the image of God and is still a living human being. But Dan Patrick would deny victims of rape any options at all. The claim paired with the text on the screen is mostly true. When asked at a debate about abortions and the cases of rape and incest, Patrick left the door open on one option, saying the only exception would be if the life of the mother was truly in danger. He voted against funding to test the backlog of rape kits, allowing rapists to walk free. That's misleading. The first part of the statement is true, but misleads viewers to think Patrick did not support Support money for rape kit testing. Patrick did vote against the state budget bill as a whole, and that did include money for rape kit testing. It also leaves out that Senator Patrick voted for a bill concerning the very rape kit standards that got this money. Ultimately, the budget passed with the testing money, so the claim that this vote is allowing rapists to walk free doesn't hold up. The ad ends with opinions and promises. These are not minor differences. Dan Patrick is just too dangerous. I'm Leticia Vandepute. We need to respect women and their families. As Lieutenant Governor, I'll fight for you. Kevin Schwaller, KXAN, investigates. And you can view our fact checks for other candidates on our website, kxan.com. We want to give you more perspective on where the candidates stand on the issue of abortion and the Texas restrictions. You heard some of Patrick's stances. He also voted for the HB2 abortion restrictions. Senator Vandepute voted against the abortion restrictions in HB2. She said she supported the abortion ban after 20 weeks, but wanted exemptions for rape and incest. Senator Vandepute has also said said she believes HB2 limits access to health care, and that is never the responsible answer. One week from tonight, we should know who will be the next mayor of Austin. Candidate Mike Martinez is calling this a knockdown, drag out runoff race. And now his opponent, Steve Adler, is airing a television ad going after Martinez and his past. KXAN investigator Kevin Schwaller looks into the ad's claims all new tonight. At a press conference, Mike Martinez said city fees are too high and promised to lower them. Steve Adler goes on the attack in this ad, looking back at the record of Mike Martinez. Mike Martinez said city fees are too high and promised to lower them. Four days later, he voted to raise them again.
that's misleading. Martinez said at a press conference he wants to de-layer the fee structure and fight against regressive fees. He didn't specifically say he would lower them. Martinez then voted to increase some fees as part of an overall fee package. The Martinez camp argues the issue is more complex, and they point out last month he also lowered water fees for customers who use the least water, while raising the cost for those who use more. Martinez has voted to raise taxes and utility rates while ending free bus service for seniors. That's mostly true. Overall, the property tax rates in Austin have gone up more than 8.5% since Martinez took office. Still, most times, Martinez has voted for a reduced property tax rate from year to year. Martinez also voted for higher electric rates in 2012. As far as ending free bus service for seniors, Martinez says the decision came after a recommendation from the state's Sunset Advisory Commission. At the time, Capital Metro's reserves were dwindling. He voted for corporate tax breaks for some of the biggest companies in America but won't give Austin families real tax relief. That's misleading. Martinez voted for deals with Apple and Facebook, but the claim about real tax relief, that's an opinion. We're talking about the 20% homestead exemption. It's a tool that will help the people that need it the most. That's not real tax relief. Providing homestead exemption, exemption is not going to do anything for the most needy in our community. The ad ends with another opinionated jab at Martinez. He seems content with the status quo not offering solutions. Mike Martinez is hurting the middle class. It's time for a new way forward. Kevin Schwaller, KXAN Investigates. The Martinez campaign says it is not running any television ads right now, but they have done a negative web video. We've got links to those videos and a deeper look at the claims in this ad on our website, kxan.com. West Texas 2005. Young boys at a state-run school are sexually abused. The ad from Democratic candidate for governor Wendy Davis's campaign focuses on reported sexual abuse at the West Texas State School. When a local investigation lags, a Texas Ranger notifies Attorney General Greg Abbott asking him to investigate. That's misleading. The ad specifically says the ranger contacted Attorney General Greg Abbott. But the ranger testified in front of a joint committee of the legislature, the case saying he contacted a prosecutor in the office and received a reply from the prosecutor, not Attorney General Abbott himself. Abbott does nothing. Eleven months go by. That's also misleading. In the same testimony, the ranger says that response to the email, which he got a couple days later, let him know that the local district attorney had to request the state's help with the case, and the AG's office eventually got involved. Still, it did take 11 months from the time the ranger sent the email until the time the attorney general's office says it got that request for help. Sixteen more incidents of abuse and neglect take place. That's, again, misleading. KXAN News got the numbers from the Texas Juvenile Justice Department. It lists 16 confirmed cases in those 11 months. Six of the 16 cases are clear instances of abuse or neglect, but the other 10 are unclear and need further documentation. They're for things like contraband or unprofessional conduct. But Abbott didn't pursue the case. That's not true. A press release from the Attorney General's office shows it presented the case to a grand jury and eventually one man was convicted. The ad ends with a question to viewers. What insider was Greg Abbott covering up for this time? Kevin Schwaller, KXAN News.